Hey guys, welcome to Safi Next. Guys, we know that ice is less dense than liquid water because it floats in water. But probably very few of us know the exact answer to why is ice less dense than water. In this video, I'm going to explain this concept through some simulations. So let's see this presentation. Let us begin from a hypothetical experiment. That is, let's we have the capability of controlling an individual oxygen atom and hydrogen atom. Then we place an oxygen atom somewhere in space and gradually bring a hydrogen atom in the vicinity of oxygen atoms such that the center to center distance between the two atoms equals 0.0975 nanometer. At this separation, the two atoms can interact with each other by affecting the valence electrons on of each other, thereby developing a covalent bond. Since the electronegativity of oxygen atom is greater than the hydrogen one. Therefore, it drags the electron of hydrogen atom a bit closer towards itself, which results in a partial positive charge on hydrogen atom and a partial negative charge on oxygen atom. For completing electronic configuration that is having eight electrons in its outermost shell, the oxygen atom needs one more covalent bond. If we bring another hydrogen atom to the same distance as the previous one, another covalent bond is formed between the pair of electrons of oxygen and hydrogen atom. The angular separation between the position of two hydrogen atom is exactly equal to 104.5 degrees. So this figure provides complete geometrical structure of H2O molecule. We can use the rules of physics to understand the behavior of multi-molecules in liquid or in solid ice through this structure. Let's move ahead. Let's we have another H2O molecule and we want to bring this H2O molecule closer to the first one in this orientation. Now the partial negative charges on the two oxygen atoms of the two molecules and the partial positive charges on the two hydrogen atoms of the two molecules repels each other. Therefore, making this configuration of two molecules completely unstable. I want to play with this molecule a little more. So first I want to, I want to change its orientation and, and its position so that I could present this structure easily. Now I want to bring another H2O molecule closer to the first one and place it at a position such that the separation between the hydrogen atom of the first molecule and oxygen atom of the second molecule is exactly equal to 0.0975 nanometer. At this separation, the, 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 the positive terminal and the negative terminals of the two molecules again interact and make a bond, which we call it hydrogen bond. This new interaction is again making an angle of 104.5 degree. With these positions of the two molecules, this structure is stable. So I want to join some more molecules with these two molecules. If I bring a third molecule to this position, another hydrogen bond forms between the intermediate molecule and the third molecule, if I keep on repeating this procedure, I can construct a structure like this or a hexagonal structure. This hexagonal structure is electrostatically stable. Note that there is a huge empty space inside this structure. If I reduce the size of this structure and keep on repeating this structure in three dimension, 
I will have a structure like this. This is, in fact, the three dimensional crystalline structure of solid ice below zero degrees centigrade. Note that there are a lot of enough spaces inside the structure in between two structures like these one. These voids are empty spaces are responsible for the reduced density of solid ice. To further understand why the density of liquid water is greater than the density of solid ice, let us move once more to the previous structure like this one. If I could place this structure inside a container, it would occupy this much space. Note that I am drawing this as a two-dimensional picture, but in fact this is a three-dimensional structure in which the height of this can be considered perpendicular to the plane of the slide. Now if we begin to raise the temperature of this structure, the hydrogen bonds are not strong enough. Just above zero degree centigrade, these bonds would, would break and the structure would reduce to this form, where now the molecules are relatively free with respect to each other. If you further increase the temperature, the molecule will pick translational kinetic energy and they will begin to move from their position like I am focusing on the motion of this molecule. Further increasing the temperature would give enough energy to the molecule to overcome the repulsive forces between the negative and positive terminal of the uh, other of, of the of the different molecules and would uh, be able to even cross the molecule or collide with the center of the molecule thereby changing its direction randomly. If I repeat this procedure with all the molecules in motion it will go like this. Now the molecules are moving randomly, they collide with each other. The translational kinetic energy due to increased temp temperature is large enough to overcome the repulsive forces between the positive and positive terminal and negative and negative terminals of different molecules. Alongside we see that the volume or the space occupied by the molecules is very small. Of course this is not an exact simulation because in some region the molecules bunch up but that's not the case in reality. There is However, we see that when the molecules are in motion, the void reduces and this gives rise to increased density of liquid water. Thanks for watching.